Honourable Members, on 22nd December 2023, I received a communication from the Secretary General of the National Unit, Unit Platform, NOP, Platform Party, about changes in the office bearers in opposition leadership in Parliament, as follows. One, pursuant to Article 82A of the Constitution of Republic of Uganda, 1995, Section 6B of Administration of Parliament Act, Honorable Joel B. Senyonyi, MP Nakawa West Constituency, is elected as a leader of opposition, replacing Honorable Matthias Mpuga, MP of Nyendo, Mukungwe, Mukungwe constituency, who is nominated as a backbench commissioner. Two, Honorable John Baptist Nambeshe, MP Manjia County, is appointed as the chief opposition whip. Honorable members, Section 6B of the Administration of Parliament Act stipulates that a leader of opposition in Parliament shall be elected by a party in opposition to government, having the greatest numerical strength in the Parliament, and a person elected leader of opposition shall take office upon formal announcement on the floor by the speaker, not anybody else. I now take the opportunity, I want to take this opportunity to formally announce Honorable Joel Basekesi. Basekesi. Okay, B. Senior Yi as a leader of opposition in the Parliament. <laughs> Honorable Senior Nyi Joel, I want to congratulate you upon ascending to this position. It's a very high position, very, very high position. And I wish you a productive tenure of office as a leader of opposition. You're most welcome. And as government on this side and as leadership of Parliament, you're now part of the leadership of parliament. We will work together with you for the good of humanity. We are here to work for humanity, work for our people, and we promise we'll leave this country, we'll leave this parliament better than the way we, we, we got. And uh, this house is for intellectual debates intellectual, not flexing muscles. As leader of opposition, I urge you to build works upon your predecessor, Honorable Matthias. Honorable Matthias, I want to thank you so much. I want to thank you. Honorable Matthias, we want to thank you so much for your service to the people. And I want to urge uh, uh, my son Joel that uh, I will refer you to Rule 14 and uh, Special Rule 13.3, which requires that the leader of opposition to hold regular consultation with the speaker. The leader of opposition shall hold regular consultation with the speaker in whatever job he does. And we are open, our offices are open, and we'll be work with you. We'll accord. You want to say something as you hand over? We'll accord Honorable Mpoga a, a minute to make his remarks. As he, as, he hand, as he hands over to his successor, Honorable Senyonyi, uh, and will also allow Honorable Senyonyi 
to make his maiden speech as a leader of opposition uh, as, as, as we move on. By this announcement, honorable members, Castillo, of the chief opposition whip, and that is pursuant to section 61 of Administration of Parliament Act. Honorable members, you may recall that on 13th July 2021, Parliament approved four backbench commissioners for a period of two and a half years in furtherance of Rule 11, four and six of the Rules of Procedure of Parliament. The tenure of the four backbench commissioners expired on 13th December 2023. Hence, the need for an election of backbench commissioners pursuant to Section 2 of Administration of Parliament Act and Rule 11.4 of the Rules of Procedure. There are three slots available for party and government and the national, that is the national resistance movement and one slot in opposition, which is the largest numer with the largest numerical strength. And in this case, the national unity platform, NOOP. In line with the section 2B of Administration of Parliament Act, and Rule 11.4 of the Rules of Procedure, I want to invite the nomination of, of the three backbench commissioners from the chief opposition, I mean one backbench commissioner from the chief opposition whip. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Let me commence by congratulating you upon convening a very successful conference of speakers and presiding officers of the Commonwealth countries. Although it didn't end well with our own, your own, Madam Speaker, the Honorable Nkunyinji Mwada. Oh, actually, let's, let's, let's first, can you first give me the uh, commissioner? Yes. Then that one. Yeah, because first one. <coughs> first one to section two of the Administration of Parliament Act, as amended, Madam Speaker. I hereby designate the Honorable Matthias Impuga, a member of the National Unity Platform, as parliamentary commissioner from the opposition. I beg to designate Madam Speaker. Thank you, thank you. Is that the only person you have? That's the only person you have as a, back, a backbench commissioner? So the Honorable Mpuga has been nominated and that means he's unopposed from opposition side. And being unopposed, I put a question, those in favor say on the contrary, nay. Aye. The eyes have it, Honorable Mpoga, congratulations. Going, <laughs> leader of opposition in the parliament, say something, and then hand over. And can I also invite Honorable Senyonyi, Joel, to come and take up this seat. Clap for my love. What's wrong with you? Much obliged, right, Honorable Speaker. First of all, a happy new year to everyone here. Allow me also to join you in uh, initially congratulating uh, General Ali for the recognition 
but also pass on my commiserations to him and the family for their great loss. The Honourable Speaker. Thirdly, to congratulate you in uh, successfully hosting the Commonwealth Speakers, I was particularly intrigued, uh, but also had my curiosity aroused by your own opening statement to the conference, um, especially when you emphasized the importance of the independence of parliament and uh, emphasizing the doctrine of separation of powers in the way we execute this public duty. I hope everybody had and that you lead us in asserting our mandate as parliament uh, right from there onwards. That said, right honourable speaker and colleagues, allow me to take this senior honour to initially thank the people of Nyendo Mukungwe who brought me to the fore to be at the service of country and uh, made my party recognize my capabilities and humble abilities to serve as a team leader over the last two and a half years. Right on, Speaker. I remain eternally grateful for uh, being allowed to offer myself for service uh, to this great country. Right on, Speaker, I would like also in the same breath to thank you and the right on our deputy speaker for uh, the immense cooperation we have had as leaders in this house to be able to steer the house this far with so many challenges, pitfalls, but with the gusto to carry on even when uh, things look tough sometimes. That's the essence of leadership, right on the speaker. I thank you so much, and the Deputy Speaker, in absence, for uh, uh, what we've been able to do as leaders in this House. Allow me to also thank immensely colleagues across from my side and across the aisle um, for according me space and uh, the opportunity to speak to them, sometimes in a tough way, and I know that sometimes I've stepped on toes. Um, but I never set out to be personal in any way. I've been at the service of the country. And if anybody felt personally offended, I take this occasion to approach as whoever felt personally uh, offended by my approach. But I always set out to do the best for the country. Right on the speaker, uh, I felt at this moment that uh, probably you allowed me an extra minute to inform the House that I did not meet the right on the speaker in Parliament. We met way time back when she was still uh, teaching at uh, MOOPS. In fact, at one time she was succeeded by MOOPS to teach in my college. So you can easily say, at one sign her check, paycheck. So we are not meeting in the House as a speaker, probably for more than 18 years, as somebody had known. At one time, she was blue and were in the trenches, and I know she has no apologies for formerly being a blue. And along the way, the sun shone upon her hand, she became yellowish, she became yellowish. You see, that is the, the beauty of freedom of choice. And uh, all of us, whatever we are and stand, must respect the choices people make. And when they make choices, those choices must be for the service of common good. That should be well understood in no uncertain terms. I respect the right honourable speaker because she made her choice. And then see where she is. That was her choice, and I respect that choice. 
My only call to her is to make use that choice to serve common good. Secondly, Red right Speaker, with your intelligence, I neither met the Deputy Speaker here. You know, he was my student of politics. He was a young man and I was a senior in the field. Him and others used to get my tutorage when he was still a blue and we worked well. When he chose to cross the blue line and he became a yellow, that was his choice as an adult. So we shared a lot then and the two have my immense respect as it is over the house. I am bringing this out to appeal to every one of us to understand that we occupy this public space for a purpose. And that purpose must not be for the sake of it, but to change the trajectory of this one country called home. And when we are members of parliament, then that space is even more distinct because the call for duty is beyond the ordinary. And we must be here and look at each other from both sides of the aisle as servants of the people. And at all times, we must invite common good to prevail. Let me speaker, I would like to appeal to the House to afford my successor the same support so that common good is served. The Honorable Joel Senyonyi, young as he is, but he's very reasonable. And he deserves our support so that we continue the duty we have started, both as NUP, a very young party, but also as the opposition in our quest to see a better tomorrow for our children and for posterity. So that when history books are written, they will have space to say, they met in the house, they were different, they opined differently, but they converged to the center to put forward common good. That should be act in the history of our work. Let me speak uh, over the last few days, I've been reading uh, a small book written by uh, Hemin Sumini, titled, The Things You Can See Only When You Slow Down. It's a good title. The things you can see only when you slow down. Sometimes the, the, the train is so fast that you can mistake a tree for an animal that you need to, to stay on the, pedo of the, the middle pedal to see your direction and the trajectory of the nation. I want to invite every one of us to look for that copy and read it. So sometimes we need to slow down and understand better our surroundings. Maybe some of us are so fast and therefore we lose sight of what matters. So we need to really look out for our surroundings and understand better where we need to go to my young brother, Joel. I'll uh, look for my copy of a book titled, How to Hug a Porch Pine. <laughs> How to Hug a Porch Pine. It, it was edited by Dr. Debbie Ellis. It's very good reading. You know, you will get in your position. Honor, honorable members, he did not say conchubine. <laughs> That's why you're laughing. I said it's a, a porch pine. <laughs> P-O-R-C-U-P-I-N-E. 
Oh, do people here allow to hug concubines? I said concubines. <laughs> Thank you, Adonis, for correcting them. They were going to look for a, 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 that, a title that does not exist. I was only passing on a humble message to my young brother and now leader on how to find space to hug porch pines. They yeah. are difficult people, but they are part of life. You cannot change a difficult person, but set boundaries. Communicate effectively that you understood. Don't take it personal. Take care of your good self. Focus on the positive. But and be patient. Seek support. It's all over. This place. Remember, you're not alone. And where you get space, celebrate your successes. Right on the speaker, finally, I'm indebted to the technical team we have worked with as the opposition in Parliament. It has technically backstopped us to work better. I hope my successor will take benefit of that too, so that humanity is served while we are in occupation of this humble but not eternal space. I thank you for God and my country. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much, Lok. Honorable members, honorable members, I want to thank you, honorable Lok, former Lok, my commissioner now. You're now my commissioner and my staff. And we don't regret, me and the deputy speaker, we don't regret being your friends, and we will continue being your friends. I have told even my party, you don't choose for me who my friends are. I will work with my friends, like uh, Honorable Segona is my dad, I will work with them, and even if we differ politically, but we will work together for the good of humanity. And uh, you, you did a good job. As law. And this country will forever be indebted to you. I want to welcome my young, said your young brother, for him, he's my son. I want to welcome the law to come and give his maiden speech. Lop, you're welcome. Thank you, right honorable speaker and members. Allow me to say Happy New Year to us all. I want to take this opportunity firstly to salute the right honorable Matthias Mpuga for his service and for his leadership. He's led us under difficult circumstances, but uh, he managed to remain composed and to lead us through those very difficult times. And so I salute you, sir. I am lucky that we'll continue working together. So there is a lot that I'll be connecting with you and uh, learning from you and the other colleagues for us to be able to do this work. Right Honorable Speaker and members, Rule 14.1 of our Rules of Procedure provides that the principal role of the leader of the opposition is to keep the government in check. By God's grace, I will execute that mandate effectively. And um, my hope 
my hope is that I will get support from this house, not just my colleagues on this side, but across to do this work. Because you see, keeping the government in check is to the benefit of all of us here and the people that we represent. Because when we are pushing back against things like corruption, when we are ensuring there is service delivery, when we are ensuring that there is value for taxpayers' money, it's not for the good of just the opposition. It's for all of us. Because regardless of the political party you belong to, when you go to a health center and there's no doctor to attend to you or no medicine, you will suffer. If you're driving on bad roads because either the money has been abscatulated or whatever the case might be, regardless of the political party you belong to, poor service delivery will affect you. So my hope is that uh, I'll get the support of the entire house indeed in doing this work of uh, keeping the government in check. And so I believe we shall be able to agree on a couple of things in as far as keeping the government in check is concerned. I want to appeal that where we disagree, and indeed, we are going to have numerous opportunities to disagree. I hope that we can disagree respectfully and that there gets to be space to disagree and for divergent views. But otherwise, I look forward to working uh, with everybody to serve the people of Uganda. I thank you, Right Honorable Speaker and members. Thank you. Honorable member, thank you so much. Honorable members, this morning we happen to have received a, a report from the Auditor General. And these reports belong to the leader of opposition and which, uh, which reports are going to be laid on table for scrutiny. Uh, when you hear the leader of opposition talking about that, there was an issue of value for money audit which was being talked about. Uh, they are going to do scrutiny of the monies that we appropriate in this house. They should be able to scrutin uh, do scrutiny of this money and give a feedback to this house. So uh, don't misunderstand his uh, uh, government.